So um, this will be available to everyone after after we finish today so that you can uh, share it around with other colleagues who might have missed it or um, or just use it for your reference. So um, during the, the webinar, we do have the Office 365 hashtag visible there for you to use. Um, feel free to share your feedback or, or any comments you might have using that. Um, so that's, that's nice and easy. Um, is everyone seeing the slides all right? I've just changed. So if, if you can't see the slides, just let me know. All right, so just a few points about using Microsoft Link, which is the client we're using to do this webinar today. Um, if you're having difficulty with the audio, just let me know. Um, also, if you're having trouble reading the slides, in the bottom right-hand corner, you'll see the full screen feature. Just click that, and it'll make the slides take up the full screen for you to make it a bit easier to follow. Um, at any point during the presentation, if you have any questions, please use the instant messaging panel, which is um, just to the bottom left of the screen. All right, well, without further ado, I'll um, introduce you to Stuart Moore, who will be presenting the, um, the webinar today, and I'll pass it over to you, Stuart. Thanks, Lindsay. Um, ha no, good afternoon to everyone who's, uh, who's dialing in from all, uh, all corners of, uh, of the country. So um, we're, we're running this completely on, on Microsoft Link, and that's one of the products that we'll talk about um, a bit later today. But um, so my role in, in Generation is to, um, is to talk to customers um, across a diff number of different verticals around um, Office 365 and, and public cloud, um, as, you, as my cloud's a bit of a buzzword these days. And, Microsoft have got some pretty distinct offerings for um, for public cloud and also private cloud on premise, and um, we've now got an Office 365 for education, which has only recently been become available, um, you know, as an offering to free to um, to higher education institutions and um, K to 12. So um, my, I've got my details on the screen. So um, if you do want to email me or IM me at any point, um, I've got my details there. I've also got my phone um, details later on if anyone wants to give me a call and, and take anything offline. Um, but feel free to IM during the panel um, in the side, and I'll try and address uh, your questions as, as we go. So we're looking to try and wrap this up in about half an hour because I know everyone's busy. Um, but if you do want to take anything offline, then please um, please give us a shout. So I've just got to, um, a slight agenda to I'm going to adhere to um, is, is what, what we're actually talking about today, what's the, um, the overview of the service and the offering and what, what Microsoft are putting out there. Um, in terms of the actual deliverables, what do you get um, from the service? Um, we'll talk a bit about licensing and, and pricing because there, uh, there is some, but there's a free offering um, which covers a large gamut of what, what everyone's after, um, but there, there's also some extra additional features which are at a, a separate additional price. Um, I'll also talk a bit about any customers that have live at EDU um, at the moment. So any customers, what, what's going to happen with that, and some timeframes and um, some of the building blocks that we need for a live at EDU transition, and what also service changes to um, Office 365. Um, then I'll get into a bit talk about SkyDrive or SkyDrive Pro. So there's a bit of confusion um, with a lot of customers that I go out and talk to around, um, you know, what do I get in SkyDrive and what's coming and um, bits and pieces. Um, then we'll talk around building blocks, so what you guys actually need uh, from an on-premise perspective or um, you know, given that most of you are probably Active Directory or um, Exchange customers at the moment, um, how do we leverage that investment in Microsoft and, and extend that into um, public cloud? So some of this stuff may, may you may have heard before, but um, uh, feel free just to, um, to, to tune out at that point if you need to. Um, and then we'll talk about some case studies for for cloud and, and, and generation e and, and expertise. So um, part of our role as a, as a cloud accelerate partner and integrator is um, is getting those on-premise environments to, to extend into the public cloud um, and also to provision those services, consulting, um, implementation, those sort of services. Uh, and then we've got some next steps. So we've got contact details for local um, representation for generation e if you do need to get in touch, if you've got any I I queries around licensing or um, how to get something done or you want to help hand with implementation, then um, feel free to pick up the phone or, um, or link um, IM, IM us and um, get that underway. So where we see Office 365, and, and, and I, I, see probably, I, I see quite a few schools um, as my day-to-day -day business, and, I, and I'm, I'm definitely seeing some evolving uh, technology trends. Um, everyone's talking about cloud. Everyone's wanting to deliver collaboration tools. Um, to students and staff, um, and they want that in a secure and controlled manner. So some of the previous offerings, and there's, there's lots of Google offerings and free offerings out there, but they don't necessarily give you the control and um, security that, 
um, you, you really need to with the duty of care for, for staff and students. So Microsoft have come out with a, with a really great um, product um, in Office 365 for Education, which leverages the exact same service um, as the enterprise version, just that you guys will get it for, um, for virtually nothing. So it takes some of the really great elements that you've, you've, you've probably got in play today, like the Office Pro Plus or an Office client on the desktop, um, and gives you a hosted environment to, um, to utilise as well for hosted exchange, etc. So some really great um, enterprise-grade collaboration tools that are provided to you guys for, um, for virtually nothing. So in terms of Office 365, what do we get? So Office 365 is a... Um, so I'm just waiting to the slides are waiting to catch up. We're just having some, uh, Lindsay's just going to put up the uh, sharing again. Okay, so it should be on slide six now, so it should be um, the, the talking about the product offerings. So um, at, the, at the base offering, we've got um, some, some hosted products, so the hosted exchange, hosted SharePoint, hosted link. Um, this, it, it's, it's, it's an identical offering to what you can deploy on-premise. Um, right, we're still having some issues with the um, presenter, so... So Lindsay's going to have to um, articulate the, um, the slides for me, so um, I'll just announce that all, um, orally when, when I need to. So, so at, at the root of it, we, we're going to be, Microsoft are offering um, some hosted products and as well as some on-premise um, elements. So Exchange Online will come delivered as a hosted Exchange um, platform, so similar to what you deploy Exchange on-premise. On that comes as a completely um, hosted um, solution from Microsoft, so no worrying about backup. Um, you know, re restores, that sort of stuff, that's all handled by, by the Microsoft service. Same with SharePoint, so SharePoint you'll get a, you'll get a SharePoint tenancy, um, some pooled storage and be able to provision intranet and um, other, other features out of SharePoint Online. Uh, Link Online is the third, the third major offering, which is what we're using today, which is, a, um, which is an online collaboration and, and unified communications tool. Um, and you can extend that to staff and student and talk about collaboration over instant messaging and content sharing and desktop sharing and um, document collaboration like we're, we're doing right now. So the, the fourth element is, is being able to deliver Office Professional Plus as a subscription. So that's, that's your software, that's your installable, ex executable on the desktop. Um, that's being delivered as a, as a subscription-based service. So that's um, not included in the A2 or the free um, component of uh, the Office 365 for Education, but down the track you'll see Microsoft subscription-based um, licensing come through Office 365. So you'll be able to consume um, software, software as a service in a subscription-based model. Next slide, um, please, Lindsay. So, so what do we get? We get the in part of the A2 bundle. Um, you'll get SharePoint Online, Exchange Online, and Link Online for um, either staff or students. Um, and that's configurable in a, in a number of different ways. So Exchange Online, you'll get a 25 gigabyte mailbox, which is split between um, a personal archive and a mailbox. Um, that's available in, the, in both Rich Client and Outlook Web App. Um, it's fully, uh, it's got uh, full front online protection for Exchange, so it's got an anti-spam service in, in, in included as well. Um, and obviously all the shared calendars, etc., that you have in, as part of that ex on-premise Exchange offering. Also, Exchange Active Sync to extend that to a, to a mobile device as well. SharePoint Online, you'll get a, a fairly vanilla SharePoint um, installation, which is accessible from anywhere. Um, the only thing I would say around SharePoint is if you're doing any trusted code or any um, 
web parts that are that utilise trusted code is that that won't be available in SharePoint Online because it's um, a multi massively multi-tenant environment and um, tr trusted code is not supported at this point. But for a for a straightforward SharePoint um, document collaboration team sites that sort of stuff, it's very um, very very um, it's a great it's a great offering for for schools rather than set up and provision that environment on premise. The third one would be Link Online. Um, which we're using, so that's instant messaging and presence client. Um, we can do PC to PC audio over the public internet, um, video conferencing, collaboration, um, sim similar to what we're doing today, um, just peer to peer. So I don't know, it's not integrated with the, um, the public switched uh, telephone network like ours is. Um, it's really a, a PC or a, or a mobile um, based offering. Um, we can also, that, that will also integrate with Exchange Online for your calendaring integration, etc. So that's at the core of the, the products. Um, I'll go into a bit around um, Office Professional Plus, um, but this is only available with an A3 and up plan. So that's um, that's really just the, um, the the caveat around that. Our next slide, please, Lindsay. So we'll just talk a little bit around the uh, Office 365 uh, licensing structure. So in the old um, structure around Live at EDU and um, early iteration of, of Office 365, they have um, they were going to charge for faculty and uh, staff access, and, and, and that would be an, a monthly charge per user. In the new pricing structure of Office 365 for education, everything included in the Plan A2 is, is free. So that's normally accessed via an exchange, um, your uh, education subscription. So you, uh, sorry, education. Um, subscription, so, uh, licensing subscription with your um, LA, uh, LA or your uh, licensing account reseller. Um, so similar to a Data3 or Insight or whoever might process your licensing computer leg, um, you can order um, these plans um, through there. So they're a nil cost offering, so you, you do need to place an order with, with those LAs, um, but it'll be for a zero, zero cost. So, and you, you, you really just tell them your seat count in terms of your staff and students, and they'll provision that. Um, with Microsoft in the background. So what do you get in Plan A2? So A2 will be, my, my, my opinion, probably the most popular offering. Um, it'll give you Office Web Apps. So Office Web Apps is a bit of a, um, a Pandora's box as well. Um, it's really driven through SharePoint Online. So um, being able to edit um, documents and, and collaborate through, uh, through a web browser, um, and that's delivered as part of a, um, a SharePoint instance. So you can't have Office Web Apps without having SharePoint. So it's very much an integral part. Um, you'll get IM of Presence with Link, um, a conferencing service, so you'll be able to, to, like we've done today, bring in a whole bunch of disparate people using web clients, rich clients, um, whatever it is, and that's only going to get nicer as, as Office 365 um, matures as a service. So and when we go to the next um, iteration of um, products, um, that will become a lot more richer, being able to join full video conferencing in a web page and that, and that sort of stuff, um, fully rendered in a browser. Plus you get all your email calendaring archiving, um, that's free for students and, and staff. So we can go up up into the A3 and A4 plans um, with that. A3 really adds that ability to install Office Pro Plus on a, on a PC um, and home user home use rights, which you probably some some of you take up today um, with your staff. Um, but you'll need to um, look in the future as, as a licensing that through A3. So if you look at the figures, um, the figures aren't relevant for um, an Australian marketplace, and they're certainly not relevant t today. So I'd encourage you, if you do want to go down that path of an A3 or an A4 plan, um, is, is, is interact with us, and we can we can help you find um, a licensing specialist, or we can we can coordinate with a um, licensing provider for that as well. So A4 plan A4 also adds link. Voice. So I'm talking to you today through through Link Voice, um, and also the guys that are dialed in with their phones are using the Link um, Voice capability. What that means is it gives you the cows and the ability to run um, a Link um, service on premise. I'll be able to integrate that with with um, with the public switch telephone network rather than um, a hosted um, version out of Singapore and and Hong Kong. So there's a bit more specifics around um, emailing and calendaring um, and what you do get. Um, you'll notice is A3. A3 really steps up in terms of um, productivity and also hosted voicemail and, and some of those more um, capable um, voice um, capabilities. But A2 and A1 is where, where we're at today where we see a lot of customers really taking wanting to take those plans up given that they're, they're a free offering. So you'll notice is that live at EDU, when we had in the far left thing, you'll see Exchange Online. Um, that's really the capabilities that you had 
in, um, in Exchange Online and Live at EDU. So you're really just an email um, only product. Um, we're taking that before, uh, taking that further now, and including SharePoint and Office web apps, etc., um, to promote to promote more collaboration in, in schools. So I just want to talk a bit about Live at EDU because I, I talk to a lot of customers, and there's a there's a fair fair few um, schools and, and and educational institutions that are running. Um, live at the moment, and they've got a lot of questions around what what's going to happen and how how does that how does that work, um, and, and what do I get? What what happens when I do my transition to Office 365? So, um, as is, it's a free offering from Microsoft, so it will it will transition into Office 365 for education. There's um, you can't we won't be able to hold on to uh, Live at EDU forever, and there's some there's some good reasons for that. Is that the system, the, the the service is maturing. Um, it's also becoming more corporatized, and, and it ties in with um, the enterprise um, grade service that Microsoft is offering. So there's going to be some, it's going to be a lot of gains, and there's going to be some things that will change, like SkyDrive, etc., and um, Live Messenger, etc., that that may change and be transitioned into a um, into the uh, Link or another product. So. Um, at the moment, we get a 10 gig, 10 gig mailbox with Outlook Live, and this is really hosted out of the, the Windows Live or Hotmail um, style service. Um, so it's really located in the consumer arm of, of Microsoft. So at the moment, we get web apps with SkyDrive, which is a really consumer, consumer service, and we get 25 or now 7 gig um, storage with SkyDrive. So any of you um, that are running this at the moment, um, it's very much um, branded as a live at EDU or, or an education service, but it is hosted and delivered out of the consumer arm of the Microsoft um, online services. So what we're going to do is with that we'll be transitioning to, um, to Office 365, um, and you'll see some of these things will disappear and, and, and morph into different offerings. So you'll see in terms of a self-managed or consumer Things those what very much will stay on the consumer side of things. So your SkyDrive will stay in the consumer arm at the moment. What uh, what they'll do in and your mail will be it will actually transition into the Office 365 service. So Microsoft will physically take your data and copy it from the consumer service into the the corporate service. So the Office 365 for education corporate service. So you won't you won't lose any data or the full fidelity of data and calendaring and everything like that. Um, but there will be some uh, some drawbacks to that in terms of your SkyDrive. Your SkyDrive will stay in the consumer service because SkyDrive is not offered, um, and I'll get into that a bit later. But the SkyDrive service is not offered as a um, as a service inside um, Office 365 for Education. It leverages a thing called SkyDrive Pro, which is a new a new um, offering from Microsoft and, and specifically around um, SharePoint and Office 365 for Education. So it's very much a split delineation between the. Uh, the corporate service and the um, the consumer service. So we'll be able to now deliver your exchange email will be in the corporate version or the um, the enterprise version of Office 365. We'll bring in SharePoint into the um, the corporate side of the um, of Office 365 as well, which is your where your SkyDrive and your document collaboration and document storage will sit, and then Link Online. So we're transitioning from Windows Live Messenger and some of those more consumer-oriented offerings into a um, corporate uh, managed um, solution by um, with Office 365 for Education. So um, that's if that's not clear, I can I'm happy to take any questions offline or, or online around that. Um, but that's very much how the service is moving. So what you'll see is that your identity um, that you use today will still stay in the consumer um, offering. So you'll still be able to use your live ID across um, any of those Microsoft services. But you'll be migrate. You'll be moving towards a corporate um, identity in the Office 365 um, service, which is delivered through. Um, directory synchronization and, and other elements which I'll go into a little bit later. So at the moment we're at um, Office 365 is generally available to um, EES customers. So anyone who has an EES agreement or signed a campus um, EES agreement with Microsoft can go and um, can go and do this. But as I said, you, you need to work with your LAR to um, to provision that environment and get that um, and get that going so you can provision your right amount of seat count, etc. At the moment, you've probably seen any, any of the Live at EDU customers. At the moment, you'll be receiving some communication from from Microsoft on terms of how to how to migrate from um, Live at EDU to Office 365, and that will be user initiated, and you guys will be able to, to orchestrate and start that migration yourself. Um, so, at the point where you've got the infrastructure and those components ready, ready to go, it's really a, a click operation. You'll be able to initiate that that um, that upgrade by yourselves. So, it'll actually to kick off all the um, data copying and, and data center manipulation that Microsoft needs to do, um, but that will be user-driven rather than Microsoft uh, dictating to you when you when you can 
you can uh, transition from the service. So what happens to SkyDrive? So SkyDrive will stay as the consumer service, as I said. So the data, well, you won't lose the data, but what will happen is, is your identities will be split between your corporate um, identity or your, your federated identity with Microsoft and your Windows Live identity. So they might have the same, for example, email address, but you'll have the problem where you start getting into passwords won't be synchronized and your password um, may be different to on-premise as it is to uh, Windows Live. So the way to, if, if anyone's got any significant investment in SkyDrive, then um, you need to work on a strategy to migrate that from, from the consumer service into um, SharePoint Online or, and with SkyDrive Pro. So you can still get the same functionality as, as a consumer service, um, but it will be delivered through the SkyDrive Pro and it will be located in SharePoint Online. So when you're looking at do document libraries and things like that, um, that will be the server side view, and then you'll also be able to have SkyDrive Pro on your on your desktops, which will be able to access um, elements of um, of SharePoint Online. So that's still being formulated. Um, so the data storage limits. I've actually been um, asked for clarification around Microsoft what what data um, limits they'll be offering for for SharePoint Online and with with the SkyDrive Pro. Um, so if anyone's got any questions, I'm happy to loop, loop them in when I, when I get more clarification around that. So in the consumer service at the moment, SkyDrive offers you 7 gig of storage for free, um, but I'm not sure whether that's going to translate into the, uh, the corporate or the education offering at this point. So if they do come up with some parity around that in terms of an education offering, um, you know, this, this can be used as a, as a home drive. You know, it's something that's... Um, you know, so, uh, storage that's always accessible from anywhere, um, you can either through a web browser, through a, through a rich client like SkyDrive Pro, or from a mobile device. Um, yeah, that's really what we're seeing is people wanting to provide always on um, connectivity um, and to be able to give the students and staff access to their data wherever they need it in, in a secure and controlled manner. So rather than be able to provision all this storage and buying SANS and um, everything else that you need. To, is, is using this as a replacement for that and to be able to, to give that capability to the business and to the, to the school to, um, to be able to provide that. So one of the things around SkyDrive and Office 365 is that your identity and your single sign-on is key. So we don't want to get into um, password hell where you have a different password to your on-premise infrastructure and a, and a different password for your cloud infrastructure. So um, Generation E can work with you around your SSO or your identity strategy and how we um, harmonise the two environments to make sure that when a user is signing in, they're not getting prompted a million times for um, you know, passwords and they have to remember passwords. You're in this constant resetting and, and changing of passwords. So single sign-on is, is key to using um, this, uh, the, the cloud services and Microsoft have a very clear roadmap and a very clear um, implementation strategy for that, and it's and it's very much ties in with with the existing investments that you've made with with Active Directory. So there's um, a minimal amount of new infrastructure required. So what do I think? I mean, I, I'm out there talking to customers and 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 they ask me about Office 365, and and I really see Office 365 as a great differentiator for the school. Um, you know, they're wanting really students and teachers are wanting collaboration tools, whether that's intra campus, extra campus, whatever it might be. So think about giving them link and SharePoint in a controlled fashion. You can control IM. You can put um, you know, controls around SharePoint and document management. Um, give them a safe and secure way to, to collaborate, um, as well as you know, um, talking inter, inter, interaction with other schools and other campuses and people all across the world. Um, just as we've got a federated model with with Link now, so you can invite. Um, people in from different schools, whether they're using Link in the cloud, Link on premise, you can send them a calendar invite to to your Link meeting, and they can join through a web browser. So it's no longer it's kind of breaking down those barriers of um, of collaboration with with these tools, which will work work through a web browser or work through rich clients. It's it's, it's you get feature parity for for that for that sort of um, interaction. Um, and again, you're still maintaining your on-premise identity and, and the processes that you use today. If you provision a user a certain way and, it's, and it goes into Active Directory and it goes into TAS or whatever it might be, then you know you can still maintain that process and leverage that um, that Active Directory investment and then extend that into Microsoft um, into the public cloud of Office 365. And I'll, I'll talk of something about the, the building blocks for that for that interaction as well. But if anyone has any uh, questions around that, then um, yeah, put them on uh, IM or, or take it offline at the at the end. So what do we need from a building block perspective? Um, as, I, as I said before, identity is key. So identity is very much um, 
uh, cornerstone of any of the of public cloud services. So I have to know who you are in order to deliver a service. So one of the key key elements of Office 365 is synchronise your um, your Active Directory um, into into the public cloud. So that's that's done securely through um, encryption and through certificate. Um, based authentication, so you're not just opening your Active Directory out to the world. It's very much a passive um, interaction, um, whereas you're, you're you're taking those objects that you've authored um, on premise and you're pushing them up to um, pushing them up to uh, to Office 365. So that's that's a, a one-way transaction, and that's saying here's my here's my here's my single source of of truth, and I'm going to push that up to Office 365 so I can see all my users, I can see all my distribution groups, I can see you know, these shared mailboxes, resource mailboxes, all that sort of stuff, those users, I'm putting that in and I'm authoring that and I'm syncing that up to um, Office 365. So it's just exactly the same as, um, as, the, as the enterprise offering. So if you guys are going to go off and do some research around this, the um, Office 365 deployment guide for enterprise is exactly what you need to look at. Um, there's no education-specific offering. Um, it's all in that, in that corporate and that enterprise um, implementation guide. Um, the other thing is we've got two different methods. We, we obviously want to keep passwords and identity and, 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 and authentication the same as much as possible so we don't get into that prompting and be able to have different identity for different services. Leveraging stuff like Active Directory Federation services for single sign-on, it's a free um, offering for you guys. You, you, it's included in um, Server 2012. It's included in, um, it's, a, it's an add-on to Server 2008 R2. Um, it's really just a piece of software that allows you to pass um, your users securely and um, seamlessly through to, to cloud services using that identity. So if you haven't got identity um, sorted, you can't, can't leverage any of these uh, these services, and, and I'm not just talking Microsoft-centric services. There's there's cloud web filtering providers that are leveraging ADFS now. There's um, CRM. There's Dynamics. There's other products that aren't necessarily in the in the Office 365 service that you can leverage single sign on. So you don't have to. Um, I even got told this morning that TAS is working on a um, for fiscal management is sorting on a single sign on um, service with um, Active, Active Directory Federation services. So it's not just an investment in just for Office 365, you can leverage that onto um, other products as well. Um, so the other one is password synchronization. So I do see some customers that haven't gone down the Federation model where it doesn't, there's no passwords uh, taking place, it's token based authentication. They're actually synchronizing passwords from um, your on premise Active Directory up to, to Office 365. So that has pros and cons in terms of security. Um, security model, um, and also it's another service to keep running um, so it's, it's to synchronize those passwords. Uh, the next thing I come across in, in a lot of schools is they're asking, what do, what do I do with my Exchange server on premise? So um, anyone that's running Exchange 2010 at the moment, SP1 or SP2, supports a hybrid model, so we can actually uh, tie a new Exchange organization into your existing Exchange organization and have um, a, what we call rich coexistence between the two. So you can have some mailboxes on premise and some mailboxes in the cloud and have um, full fidelity and uh, calendar sharing and free busy and everything between those two environments. So if it makes sense to keep some mailboxes on premise, then keep some. If it doesn't, send send them to the uh, send them to um, Office 365. Um, the one big thing is when you when you're talking about these these the, maybe deploying Office 365 or deploying um, anything like that, you know, determine what namespaces you want to use. And DNS and and domain names are becoming more and more um, relevant. Um, to that at the moment. So, um, you know, do you want to have a students dot you know, domain name? Do you want to have a staff dot domain name? Do you want to have a alumni section or a parent area? So, defining that um, upfront is very useful for those services because it'll allow you to, to carve off different parts of um, of your environment. Um, whether it's um, you know, for students, you want to have a students that are located fully in the cloud, and staff might be a hybrid, and alumni might be another cloud service. Um, think about those um, you know, namespaces and what you might um, what you might want in that regard. Um, bandwidth um, using cloud. I mean, go to customers and, and everyone's struggling for bandwidth. Um, will, cl will cloud use a lot of bandwidth? Will it you know, imp improve my um, my links, etc., cetera, etc.? Cetera. Um, I'll address the question at the end. So I have seen it, but I'll uh, address it shortly. Um, so bandwidth. Yeah, cloud will, will drive will drive my bandwidth usage or um, yeah, things. There's certain elements. There's things that may drive um, bandwidth. It all depends on usage models. Um, so we're happy to provide any um, guidance around um, exchange um, utilization, link utilization, SharePoint utilization. But it's basically it's, it is based on whether you're using rich clients, um, web-based um, stuff. But um, to be honest, I. I haven't come across a customer that's really struggling with um, using Office 365 in, in a bandwidth um, sense. Um, 
and most schools are getting to the point where with the NBN and um, the uh, commoditization of, um, of internet carriage, is, it's coming down and down, um, and we're getting better quality tails for, for less money. Um, the other thing to take into account is mobility. So um, does mobility tie into what we're doing now? And, we, and mobility for Microsoft in terms of a service offering is very, um, very front of mind. Um, we're talking about like with the Surface and everything that's coming out. Um, how, do, how do I leverage a, um, you know, all these services in a web browser so I can just give it to any device, you know, BYOD, stuff like that. Um, Microsoft has got a really great um, a roadmap and a really great support for mobile devices right now. We're talking the next version of Link, um, which will come out in, in the Office 365 offering next year, um, be able to do full um, high-def audio and video in a, in a web browser um, on iPad, um, things like that, um, you know, any, any Android tablets, things like that. Um, yeah, it's becoming a, everything's driving, being driven through a browser, um, and then Microsoft. This, this service is very much in step with delivering those services in a browser. Um, Tim and Tony from All Saints had a question around: Does Exchange Off 2007 offer the hybrid model as well? It doesn't. Um, but what you can do is put um, what we call a gateway or an Exchange hybrid um, gateway in front of the Exchange server at the moment. Um, and that will provide, give you your rich coexistence model. You can still leave um, your exchange deployment as is, and we put a software gateway in front of um, of that and be able to, to have a, a, a tie between the two um, offerings, the public cloud and, and, the, and the private um, exchange deployment. Um, that's a free license as well if you're using that in that, in that um, instance. It's called the Exchange um, Gateway um, Cal, so you'd be able to. That's, that doesn't have a licensing impact if you're using it for that uh, for that model. But anyone who's using uh, Exchange 2010 and, and above, um, SP1 um, has support for it um, for a hybrid model. Um, SP2 has a um, a hybrid uh, wizard which takes you through steps you through it. Um, but if there's any questions around that, then happy to take it um, offline and discuss um, discuss that in, in detail. Can you be on several licensing models at the same time? Yep, stuff. Yep, you can. So it's delivered through. Um, so to, with the, the um, once you've got that EES um, arrangement done with with your LAR and with with Microsoft, um, it's really um, you can allocate those licenses however you see fit. So if you buy a, if you have a certain amount of A4 licenses, you can then um, tie that to specific users, and that's all driven through a portal which you'll have access to as part of a, a tenant. So when you go to this service, you'll get a tenant, um, what we call a, a, an Office 365 tenancy, and that's your own little um, world, and you can control everything and, cu and customise elements within that, um, which is separate to um, other tenants. Um, and so yeah, the tenant next to, next to you has a different um, style of um, administration. So you can licence... Uh, have all your students on A2, and then ups, um, you know, up, uh, you know, upgrade your your staff to to A4. So, and, and and in saying that, those users that are licensed for those A4 will have access to the A4 capabilities. The the other ones will, you know, the A2 users will only have access to what capabilities are available at that license level. So, it's important to know if you're coming over from Library to you, um, you'll be basically on the A1 plan. So, if you do wait to do the uh, the transition um, and do the upgrade, you'll be ported across to the A1 plan. So then, again, to go to A2, it's a zero nil cost offering. Um, yeah, you can uh, you can go there and um, and do that. So I'm happy to to show anyone that wants to have a have a look. I'm happy to de demonstrate that to you as well. So in terms of some case studies or references, um, there's been a couple of um, you know, big deployments that have um, really got on board with with the offering. It's only been out a number of months. Um, we've got a manual college on the uh, on the Gold Coast, which is using about 1,500 seats of, of Office 365 for Exchange, SharePoint, and Office Web Apps. I haven't extended it to, to Link just yet. Uh, there's Mackay Christian College in Mackay that are using 1,000 seats on using an Exchange uh, 2010 SP1 um, installation. So they've, they've got the ability to onboard and offboard mailboxes through their Exchange server. So they're, they're working through some proof of concepts of um, year levels um, on that and extending capabilities just to those year levels for, for the time being. Uh, Carol and Chisholm in uh, Victoria, they've got about 2,000 seats of um, full exchange, SharePoint and Office web apps, so they've really um, got on board and, and done some really um, interesting stuff down there as well. So these guys are um, happy to talk around um, what they've done and you know, any of the pitfalls and things that maybe may, may need to look after. So i um, happy to drive um, the interaction between them and, and you guys if, um, if, that, if that suits. Um, the other thing is that a large proportion of the higher ed um, market and universities have Office 365 deployed. So if you're thinking from a perspective of 
um, how do I you know, take my a K to twelve environment or a, a TAFE environment going to um, a tertiary or you know, university study? These guys have got the same tools, so you're not learning a new mail system, and it's very familiar interaction. Um, so yeah, they, they do have um, there's a there's a there's massive numbers deployed of um, Office 365 in in Australia for that. So the next steps um, for you guys is to either license your campus with uh, for the A2 plan, which is the free one, using your EES subscription. So talk to either your account manager at Microsoft, um, Alar, or we, feel free to talk to James or, or Ryan around that. Um, those guys um, will be able to put you in touch or, or assist with that model. Um, if you want any assistance around implementation, consulting, uh, design, advice, um, those guys are the guys to go to, so they'll put you in touch. Um, with either myself or one of the other guys that um, has uh, cloud expertise, and we can address um, those particular um, those questions. So, um, yeah, it's really it's a, it's a great offering, and um, yeah, I think it's been taken up in droves um, with the schools that I'm seeing. It just needs to be managed and uh, and and gone about in the right way. My details are on the screen now, so um, it's a little bit fuzzy, but. Um, Feel free to give me a call. Uh, I've got my mobile number there and my email. Um, also my IAM address, so if you guys get link running, then feel free to add us. We have an open federation model, so you can just add my email address and uh, and give me give me a shout. I'm happy to chat and happy to talk. Um, yeah, so if there's any uh, Q&A, then feel free to use the, um, the IAM window. Otherwise, um, I'm running just about on time. Um, but if anyone's got any big questions then uh, I'm happy to answer them now or you can uh, ping me an email or, or give me a shout offline. All right. Um, does anyone have any questions here before we kind of wrap up? I'll give you a few minutes just in case anyone's typing. We've got one coming in now. So the first question is, uh, is DirtSync replacing FIM for syncing? Uh, it is um, in a way. So DirtSync is actually a cut, cut down version of, of FIM. Um, as any of you have tinkered beneath, beneath the, uh, the covers, it's actually a FIM um, installation. Um, it's not replacing FIM per se. Um, it will depend on the size of the installation. Um, so DirtSync um, will probably be good for around um, you know, around a quarter of a million object mark. So if you do have more than a quarter of a million objects, then you need to look at a full FIM installation with uh, SQL backend. Um, but for fairly modest environments that don't change too often, then DoSync is a standalone appliance and um, just a, an executable. Um, it's, 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 it's the go-to. So there will be, um, there's nothing available at the moment for, in terms of a FIM, um, what do you call management agent? Um, so the management agent is still hasn't been released for FIM, so that's that's done as a Microsoft-led um, engagement. So we need to involve Microsoft Premier Services uh, and Premier Deployment to to get access to that. But for the most for most um, K to 12 and, and TAFE and institutes, then um, the object model, object number is fairly low. Um, so I've been working with um, the TAFE um, Marketing Queensland, and they've got around a quarter of a million objects, um, and we've managed to. To, um, to filter a lot of those objects anyway, so with DirtSync, so DirtSync now, now offers a, a filtering mechanism, so we don't have to filter, we don't have to synchronise all the objects to, to Office 365, we can, we, can, we can synchronise a subset. Any more questions from anyone out there? You can, you can either, um, obviously, you can ask them now, or if you would like, definitely contact either Stuart or um, James or Ryan, and we'll be happy to help you. I think we might have one more coming in here. All right, great. Well, um, maybe we'll, we'll wrap it there. So thanks, everyone, for joining us today. And um, I'll be sending the recording of this presentation out um, 
this afternoon. So if you do have any questions, feel free to get in touch with us and um, enjoy the rest of your afternoon. Thanks. Thanks again. Thanks, everyone.